good afternoon and welcome to Hadley Matters. I'm Sharon Howard. I do the talking. Jane Nevin Smith is the producer. Cynthia Wade is the congregation. <laughs> and we have with us today our town treasurer, Linda Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here, Linda. Thank you for having me. This is very nice. We're hoping in this program to give you a better idea about the money that comes and goes in Hadley. How that happens, mm -hmm. who causes it, and what each role is. Is that a fair summary, Linda? Ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a, is that one question? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first question. <laughs> no, that was yes, my quick yes, summary. That's Would a, you agree with it? Right, that's, a, that's good. That's, okay. uh, that pretty much covers the financial responsibilities in town. Okay. I'd like to talk first about how money comes in and mm -hmm. how money goes out. And then I want to talk about who. Mm -hmm. So first of all, how does revenue enter Hadley? What? Okay. We have uh, several, uh, we have major categories of revenue. Um, and it's easier to think of, uh, rather than think of how we get $1 million, which is about what we take in each year in spendable money, it's easier to think of it in groups. And in our case, everybody's very aware of paying their property taxes and <laughs> yes. excise taxes and those kinds of things that you pay individually out of your household. So property taxes is certainly a major, uh, major re revenue area for us. Uh, this, a second category is um, the state aid that we receive yes so there are uh, we receive what's called a cherry sheet because it used to come on red paper <laughs> and even though it doesn't anymore and we have to look at it online we still will always call it the cherry sheet mm -hmm. so they tell us these various categories of income that Hadley is entitled to that's page one that's the good page and then page <laughs> two are the assessments against the town or I shouldn't say against the town assessments to the town that get taken out from the revenue um, so that we are uh, contributing to what the state thinks we ought to be contributing to, such as transportation and, and school and other areas. And so it's that net, uh, that net state aid is, is, our, is the second source of revenue for our budget. Uh, third, we have the area called local receipts, and that's basically everything else, everything else. The local receipts are collected by the town departments. Okay. And... Um, None of these, none of what I've described so far, come directly to the treasurer. They come through the uh, through the collector's office, or they come through the state and go uh, get deposited into an account for us. In the case of state aid, local receipts, however, go to the individual departments, and so they'll receive the money. Let's say the uh, building inspector uh, is getting money for permits. Mm -hmm. um, um, you all receive money over here for your programming and um, gifts and, and other sources of income. I don't think you provide a lot in the revenue that we provide that, that funds the budget for the town, but mm -hmm. you take in the money and spend yes. it directly out of those funds for programs that you, you, um, you run here. So that's a different kind of revenue, even mm -hmm. though it's all part of the picture. It's a different kind of revenue than the revenue that goes into funding our operational Mm -hmm. budget for the town. So um, the the inspectors, uh, park and rec, library, your department, the school, various, uh, they collect the fees uh, for the services and uh, town clerk's fees. Um, board and those? Of hmm? Board of Health. Board, board of Health and a uh, lot come through the select board actually in the way of permits, uh, alcohol um, permits. And they collect it and they report it on a form called a turnover, mm -hmm. which, is, um, which is just a listing of, of what it is and the account number that it goes to. And then they bring their checks and cash, mostly checks, not so much in cash anymore, um, and with the turnover and they'll mm -hmm. all add up. And then I get those deposited to the town account. And so that's really quite a big chunk of money uh, in, the, um, in the local receipts. Mm -hmm. And that's the area that we were hit most during COVID. Oh. Because uh, it's it's um, it affects really uh, we we get that money it's almost at, our, from the business that is done in the area if someone is uh, adding on to their home 
something like that. And it, when times are tight, they're not so inclined to do these extra things. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lo another large part of local receipts is our um, rooms tax and then oh, yes. the meals excise tax. Mm -hmm. So if the mm -hmm. motels aren't being filled or if people stop going mm -hmm. for meals, going out to dinner, which was a, a big part of what happened during COVID, yes. that was a real hit on our income in that area. I wondered about that commercial yes. income mm -hmm. as that falls in the local receipts. Yes, yes, going it does. into the revenue pot. Right, right, and they pay in the different categories of income, just like individuals do. They'll be paying their real estate taxes. They'll be paying their excise. They'll be paying um, their their um, well, the rooms and meals tax actually goes to the state, and then we re receive it back from the, the state. Talk a minute about mm -hmm. um, who in the town employees and government are receiving this revenue. For example, you talk about local receipts and you've talked about several people in that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking to Tom Quinlan, the building commissioner. Right. He gets it, so different departments get it. Right. And then the property taxes, you have first of all the assessor saying he doesn't get the money, but he's saying... He doesn't saying, receive the money, the collectors do. The collectors yeah. get the money there. Yeah, and they don't actually, that's that's such a large amount of money. They're 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 getting that money directly into their own account and transferring it into my account. I so see. we're not walking up and down stairs with that kind of <laughs> money, um, okay. which, which is good. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, they will do uh, their, well, I don't want to get into their job, but they will do their turnovers once a week of the money that's in their account and uh, has cleared. And they'll do that listing and they'll just come up with a turnover mm -hmm. and say, you'll, you'll see that bottom line has appeared in your, in your bank account. Mm -hmm. So they just transfer it directly electronically into, into my account. And so. I assume that, and do I assume correctly that the state funds that come in come directly mm -hmm. to you, or do they go? Elsewhere? They do. They come directly to the um, to our bank account. To, uh -huh. um, we have a we have a an account set up specifically for receiving. Um, we, we call them ACH payments, which are well, they're wired payments in mm -hmm. and. We don't take a lot of, uh, I don't want anyone to think we'll just take wires from them. Can I start wiring my, uh, my payments in? Um, no, um, it's really almost exclusively government uh, payments that go into okay. our money market account. And then we we have what I call the revenue pot. Make it a pie and mm -hmm. tell me, if you can, I don't mean to put you on the spot because I haven't asked you this, but right. what portion of the pie would come from each of those three sections. Let's say property taxes or those sorts of reads, or local receipts or state. What portion? Um, well, over half of, I was, was going to can you use my cheat sheet? Sure. Um, Wave that <laughs> around there, girl. <laughs> well, over half is uh, property. It is. Yes. And over half yes. is property taxes. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, let me just, uh, let me go. What she has here, folks, maybe while she's hunting, Jane, can you tell folks what? She's looking at the budget book for 2020-23 fiscal year, which has just been put together. That's the select, my select board member's copy. Uh -huh. And it tells every single penny that the town's planning on using and where it's coming from. So that goes first to select board, the budget book? Yeah, well, it goes to lots of places. Lots of places. Yes. And where does it go after it goes to all those places? Town meeting. Uh, it has to approve it. Because town meeting has to yeah. approve the budget. Mm -hmm. And is that is that the end of the line, or is there anybody else after the town meeting? If the town meeting approves it, is town it done? Meeting, it's done. It's, it's done. done. Right. If there's, a, if there's an issue with it, as there was actually the year that uh, where COVID kind of hit us and caught us by surprise and how long it went on, we actually went back to the town meeting in the fall uh -huh. once the fiscal year had already begun yes. and did some changes to that budget so that we could um, uh, fit our operations within the re revenues that we thought we were going to have available, which, which was a cut. Yes. Um, at, in that year. And, and that worked. That worked for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, it was well over half of the, it is over. Um, we're looking for um, almost $14 million in the uh, real estate area as opposed to less than a million or just almost a million net for state aid. So we fund our, ourselves uh, at, to a larger degree than the state aid comes in. Mm -hmm. And then the, the local receipts. That's about three and a half million. Okay. So again, we're our, our, our own. We are generating that locally. Yes. So most of it is coming in locally.
And, um, and that pretty much gets us there. We have some other transfers from funds. Uh, we have the, uh, that also come in to the extent of just a few hundred thousand dollars. So uh, our enterprise funds specifically will uh, make payments over to cover our town hall overhead because we, uh, they are self uh funded departments, their revenue is to cover their expenses, and yet they don't have all the services that we provide in town hall, the collections, um, uh, administration, HR, payroll. So there, there is a calculation that's done so that they make a transfer over. But that's just the extent of a few hundred thousand. So you can see we really, it's, it is uh, real estate and, and our own local receipts is, is the big chunk. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, What's the bottom line on a budget for Hadley? What's the bottom line? <laughs> yeah. Well, how many millions of dollars does it cost? Uh, I always to run think of it as a, a $20 million budget. It's, you a, think of it's, it's, a, it's a $20 million budget. Wow. And it's half been, of that comes pretty much from local, either receipts, property taxes, more, or more than, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, closer to uh, three quarters, really, between the two of those. I'm sorry? 70%. 70% yeah. comes yeah. from local. So, um, Right, uh, and it, so it, it's been steadily, uh, it's been steadily growing. It has have the revenues, mm -hmm. so I mean, we're not just growing. Uh, and the, have the costs and the costs and the expenses. Um, One of the things that interested me, Linda, when we were talking about the budget book, mm -hmm. um, in my work, what I would see as a budget was always a line item budget, mm -hmm. and you really didn't have any explanation about all of mm -hmm. that. I'm looking at your budget book where it's open there, and I'm seeing paragraphs of words. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. Well, Jane really pushed for that uh, uh -huh. this year. Uh, David Nixon, over over time, had developed a very long, uh, uh, lengthy budget book. Our prior town do we, administrator. Do we thank her or do we him, castigate her? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think it, I, it, it's... A little of both, but most <laughs> mostly, I think it's a good thing. No, I definitely think it's a good thing. It was just a little hard to hear last year. Last year we didn't come up with it, oh. and so to, because it was, you know, we had a new, new town administrator. Carolyn was new, and I yes. was working with the budget for the first time, and we're like <laughs> just trying to keep up with the numbers, as you say, these line items that you see, just trying to keep up. And uh, Jane, and not just Jane, we'd be saying, and when are we going to get that budget book? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, maybe. After town meeting, maybe in the fall, and we honestly, between one thing or another, we never, there it just is no FY22 budget book. So we got started early this year yes. and um, uh, decided on what was most important about it. Because okay. quite honestly, David's was 170 something pages long. And, wow. And he had a lot, he concluded our financial policies and uh, a glossary section so that if you really wanted to sit down and study it you understood a lot about Hadley mm -hmm. and this is uh, this is really focuses on the budget itself okay. where do we stand now mm -hmm. uh, where have we been the last few years we look at the budgets back to 19 and we looked then we go ahead and we look to see where we're where we're headed in uh, uh, in in for 23 so um, what you're describing about the line item is that's what we're spend. That's the spending. People think of budgets as what you're spending, mm -hmm. but a budget really is. Uh, you, it really encompasses the revenues too, because okay. that's that's pretty much your starting point. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. you know just like any household would do. What's what's our income, and yes. then you decide then what, you decide. what size house you can get or what, whether you can get a car this year and various other decisions that you make for your own family household. Yeah. Yes. And so it's like, where are we? Um, and it's been tricky the last few years. Oh, because of? Because of, because of COVID. COVID. We, saw, we saw various areas where you can see over time certain areas of our revenues that go steadily, it up, steadily increase at a certain curve. And there, there are new areas that are introduced, mm -hmm. um, such as um, the money we'll be receiving from having the cannabis uh, oh. sales here. That was zero a few years ago. So we got a new one to introduce, a new source of revenue. We don't know exactly what it is to start with. And you project it, and you get into year two, and you kind of get the hang of it, and you go, <laughs> well, what's online? And we can see where we're going over the next few years. Yes. So um, every time a new area like that opens up, it uh, it does uh, allows uh, the town to decide with this money are we going to um, 
are, we, are we going to put it into the budget or are we going to put it into something else, put more money into the stabilization? The thing is with some of these sources of revenue as they come in and they open up, they actually bring with them, uh, along with the benefit, they bring a certain responsibility. A cost, I would think, yes. Which might involve police, fire, road maintenance. Schools. Schools. Yes, and so mm -hmm. we can't just see them that all as additional money without some kind of sense that this means we've, we've got to also um, maintain the foundation yes. that brought us this ex extra money. Why would a business want to locate here? Mm -hmm. Because of what we have to offer, and then we get money from it, and then we have to continue to offer that if we want to sustain the businesses we have, yes. and if we want to attract new businesses in the future. Yes. Excellent. So. So, how's the uh, future look for 23? Uh, 23 is looking significantly better than we have had. We're, we were concerned about it a, about a year ago. Oh, yes. So, we had 20. We did not experience, um, because the shutdowns happened in March, pretty much, mm -hmm. and um, not everything went down all at once. Uh, it took a while, really, to catch on to what it is that we were living with under COVID. Yes. And um, so the schools didn't shut immediately, or the, or, uh, or the colleges around were still in business. Yes. Um, they were still thinking they were going to have their graduations and reunions. So 20 was going along. So when we look at the fiscal 20, and I should explain that the town operates on a fiscal year, not a calendar year. And that begins on? It begins July 1 July. of each year and goes to June 30th. So when we were just beginning to be affected, in our personal lives being affected in, in, affected in March, mm -hmm. we really weren't feeling the financial impact of it for most of the rest of that fiscal year. Yes. Fiscal 20 looked okay. Mm -hmm. We didn't see the growth that we might have felt, especially come spring when you oh, have four. some increases. But we were okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we already could see that things were shifting, and there had to be um, there had to be a uh, back not back well, sort of back to the starting block. But we had let's we had to revisit the calculations, obviously, for the upcoming FY twenty one. Mm -hmm. Which, again, who knew whether this was going to be a, you know, I, I remember picking up my son in March because he they were told to work remotely, and he was living by himself in Cambridge. I said, make sure you bring an, enough for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Didn't so, realize it was years, did you? <laughs> actually, he stayed with us until July. And then before he went back in, uh, to Boston, and then he was still working remotely, and he still is, actually, with his company. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we didn't know where we were going. So, uh, very typical of Hadley, we, we tend to react conservatively to these things, which yes. is what really helps us in the long run. I think so. um, yes. Frustrating as it may be at certain times and mm. things have to get cut back or we're not seeing the revenue we did. We, we tend to want to pull back and mm -hmm. say, just, just again, the way we do in our own homes. Yes. Um, we may not see the income that we thought we were going to this year. Maybe we'll put off that vacation. It's, it's the same thing on a much larger scale for the town. We start going, wait a minute. So we had a certain number of cuts that went in. But um, just as significant were the cuts that weren't actually made, but with the fact that um, uh, Carolyn um, Brennan, our town administrator, was really encouraging departments, try not to spend all the money you have been given. Yes. And then that creates at the end of the year what's called rollbacks that we have maybe a department was uh, budgeted 50000 and they spent four. That's 10000 that comes back. And we get to, and that goes into the pile that we get to work with the next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, that's what goes in making up what we call our free cash. People are like, "Where do you get free cash from?" <laughs> it's the why is it free? <laughs> is it leftovers? Could we it's, call it it's the leftovers? leftovers. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's sort of a combination of uh, the money that wasn't spent that we expected to spend, and the revenues in addition to the revenues that were projected, mm -hmm. and. Uh, in line with what I was saying earlier, we project our revenues conservatively. Yes. Um, much as we'd like to say, look at this, look at this, it's going like this, we, we're making this much next year. We really don't do that. And that's okay. part of that comes from uh, uh, the, the state and uh, Dan, uh, Dan Sedonik, our assessor, is always on. I can't, you know, we, I, I can only report so much in projected revenues to the state. 
without yes. a long explanation of why we expect more money there. So we tend to keep our revenues, our revenue projections within a very dis- defensible parameter in the first place. So, Which I think you're exactly right, as I know, Hadley, that that is probably the attitude the residents would mm-hmm. take themselves, mm-hmm. as you say, in their own budgets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the uh, things you told me, you uh, are part of a finance team. Right. Could you give us just a moment on what sure. that is and what sure. the role is? Yes, I've mentioned uh, Dan Zadonik, the assessor, already. Oh. I mentioned collector, but I didn't say Susan Glowatsky, who is uh, the, the uh, town collector. Who, um, who is part of it, and Carolyn Brennan, our town mm-hmm. administrator, and me as town treasurer. And uh, if we need to, we'll patch in the uh, accountant. Our accountant is, um, uh, it's, it's an independent company that works remotely for us, but they will, they will come in and um, either through Zoom or we'll, we'll sometimes just call them on, put the phone in the middle of the conference mm-hmm. table and, and conference them that way. So we are doing things such as going through these revenues, and in fact, that's one of the that's one of the first things that we do as a group um, as we're approaching a new year. We are looking uh, on what the revenues are going to be, and um, we each have little uh, pockets that we know most fam- we're most familiar with. Yes. And obviously, the real estate taxes are uh, the assessor's yes. area, and then. Co- uh, collections, uh, you know how how that's going uh, with the various areas like a uh, um, motor vehicle and how mm-hmm. that's looking. Mm-hmm. Um, how const- how how's construction going this year? Are people are people in the mood to build again? Are they adding on? Mm-hmm. Um, it was interesting. We were seeing more adding on than new construction, and that other wow. times we'll see things uh, that was for a while. I'm, I'm not sure what we're they're seeing right now, but it's. We um, sort of have feelers out to the rest of the town of, of how things are looking. But the other thing I, 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 w- that we review is where we are right now. So each month we um, take a look at, in these categories that I'm saying, mm-hmm. we have um, the, the, the property taxes, we have the, the state aid, and we have the local receipts, and then a total of how are we doing in each of those That's areas. Mm-hmm. And we actually... Um, we don't receive a twelfth of each of those areas each year, but we there is a percentage that we have to that we can expect by a certain each point month. each year. In so we year, have the prior two years, mm-hmm. and that's part of what's in the budget book here too. Is we have income and expenses, the, a report through January mm-hmm. this year, and we know what percentage of our total annual income and expenditures were at that point. Mm-hmm. January of 21, of 21. January mm-hmm. of 20. Mm-hmm. So let's say we had uh, 68% of us in a certain area, um, and we're at 62, or we're at 72% at mm-hmm. the end of January. Is there any special reason for it? We don't think so. We think it just looks good. Um, there's other areas, such as motor vehicle, where that's going to be a really low percentage in January, because those bills don't go out until the spring. Because it's, yes, it's a spring thing. So that's the kind of back and forth that we have around the table. And that's monthly? That that's, you need? that's monthly, uh-huh. yes. But there's, there's different areas that we cover, but um, much of it is where, where we are now and what kind of projections we can make and what are the special issues that we're seeing in town. Mm-hmm. I was interested also, uh, you mentioned you have a sometime accountant, and you also mentioned a sometime consulting with a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, much less frequently this year. Our financial advisor comes into play. He, he's connected with the borrowing that we do. Ah, yes. And we were doing quite a bit of borrowing when we had three construction projects going on at the same time. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't, we didn't just, it's not like you buy your house and just get your big mortgage. It's like you want to put $3 million into uh, the, the library's share uh, we didn't go out and borrow three million dollars. Mm-hmm. We went out and uh, every few months we were borrowing in each of these areas. And Jane knows we were ta- we were in touch a lot. What have you spent? What do you think? Anticipate your spending. Mm-hmm. We're going to borrow another three hundred thousand. We do that in short. We would do that in short term notes because the interest rate's much lower. Oh, okay. You're going to think everything's lower for the town. I mean, you're going to. You, we all wish we could have mortgage, you know, rates that the, the, the town the, the ta- town's been able to borrow at, you know. 
less than 1% to 2.5% or maybe 3% in, in mm-hmm. the worst of times since I've been here. So, I mean, we really have had, a, we're really at an advantage as a town with our, with our interest rates. And we've been on the better end of that because we have a really high credit rating in, in Hadley. Congratulations on that, by the way. I, That's I think wonderful. that it has, uh, it helps. It mm-hmm. does help. And the three buildings, of course, are the library, the North Fire Station, mm-hmm. and the Senior Center, mm-hmm. to which Sue alluded. Sue, Linda alluded. Sorry. One of the questions is, what does the Finance Committee do? You meet monthly. No. Oh, there's, you're a, there's a oh, you meant the Finance, finance Committee. Finance team versus the Finance Committee. Right. Thank you, Jane. I actually have more experience with the Finance Committee. (laughs) (laughs) I I was on the Finance Committee for the first time in, uh, I think it was 1987, was my first round on Finance Committee. I had actually run for school committee and not made it, and I was uh, crushed and disappointed. And the moderator at the time, who was Ken Parker, said, we have an opening on Finance Committee. And I said... Are you kidding? I really wanted finance committee, but there, you don't. You can't run for that. Oh, it's appointed by the moderator. And he said, "Well, then you're, you, <laughs> then you're <no."> appointed." <laughs> so it was win-win. Um, That's great. I, I really, I really enjoyed being a part of that. At the time, well, first of all, it was a five million dollar budget, not twenty, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it, um, and. Uh, Oh, what was I going to say? 1987? Um, 1987. Yeah. Oh, and there we had no town administrator. So the oh. finance committee oh. did the budget. Oh. Did the budget. <laughs> so um, You started early with your experience, I, didn't you? And, and, and that's... 35 yes. years? I haven't been doing it for 35 years. No, so. but you've been <laughs> yes. involved in the financial yes, end of since, the town. Since, since then. And so I, I probably have more budget experience than finance committees, obviously, since then, since we had... Uh, well, we had Robin Crosby and then David Nixon and now Carol and um, that really have the responsibility. I think it's in our bylaw. They're responsible for the budget. So but differentiate for me now then, because mm-hmm. we've got a lot of people in the pot now. We've got the <laughs> finance team. Mm-hmm. We have your assessor, collector, um, all, all of these people that you talk about. What's the finance committee's role in that mm-hmm. whole structure? Right. Um, well, they are... I, I remember when I first when I got my first uh, finance committee handbook. One thing that really, I really st- stood out for me and that I've never forgotten is it's saying that people in town, your taxpayers, don't have really don't go through the budget line by line. They're not going to do that individually. That's so the finance committee represents the town in that respect. Oh. That they will they. Their role is to go to town meeting and tell their peers, we've reviewed this and, 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 it's, and we approve. And uh, that's, that is kind of it in a nutshell. Now, there's a lot more to it, oh, sure. but sure. that's, that's, lovely, that's the role they play, that mm-hmm. they, stand, they stand in for the public. And the public doesn't need to go along with them, but they take it to heart. If you've ever seen, if you've been at town meeting and you see... Finance Committee approves this four to one. You know what the next question is. Who's the one? Who's the one? Who's the one and why? <laughs> I, they want to know what does Finance Committee think. And yes. um, they're not elected. They don't have, um, they don't have an interest. In, uh, they're, they're not associated with a particular department. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are as interested as every citizen in town is interested. Nice. And so... Um, and if they're, you know, I, I think that the, the moderator tries to get a balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to put all financial people, just the same way you don't want to put all lawyers on a jury. You know, you want you want to have people who on who will go. I just, I just don't, I don't know about that. You want this, <laughs> you want dissenting opinions. You, I, 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 well, I've always been in favor of dissenting opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was most comfortable. <clears throat> I was most comfortable on my t- two. T- actually, I was on finance committee again, right before I took this. So I, uh, but right before I became treasurer. So I was on another four or five years, and where we were doing the review of the budget and the review of every article. That's the other thing they do. The actual tasks they do yes. are they review every financial item for town meeting and they uh, render an opinion. They they Excellent. give their opinion yes. on it. So um, they do that. What, no, but what were you just asking? Uh, 
I'm old. You expect me to remember oh. that? <laughs> Come on, Linda. <laughs> I'm actually heading toward yeah, um, the, the, so, yeah, moving that's... into uh, actually your your background and how mm-hmm. you got where you are. But because we've been talking about line items and budgets and the whole structure mm-hmm. around the finances in this town, before I move to that, I'd like to see if either Cynthia or Jane feels like there's anything in all that you want to explore more deeply. Or Carol over there. <laughs> How'd you get here, girl? One of the things I asked her was if she's if she's one of the old Hadley families or people. And uh, Linda said, uh, "No, I've only been here forty years." <laughs> yep. But you said my next thing I should say, and I will say it is, I married a Hadley boy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that is so nice. That is, that is so kind, but I was already grown up. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, uh, so tell us about yeah. your family. Tell us yeah. about your, your life. Right. Um, we, um, yes, Bill, Bill was a Bill Dwyer Please. Jr. is okay. my husband. So we, uh, I, I did not change my name. So most people do know we're married, but it's always surprising. Some people, st- people still don't realize that. Um, he's on planning board. He's uh, he's uh, uh, active on many things and has been. He is actually. I was trying to think, one two. I think he's he's fourth generation in Hadley. Okay. And so that makes our children fifth generation. And we live in the main house. We live in the family home up in Northampton. The Dwyer family home. Uh, yes, it was Ryan first, but then oh, it became okay. Dwyer. Well, because, because mm-hmm. uh, his father was. A lawyer in Northampton, mm-hmm. you told me. He was in Northampton because that's where the county seat was. Uh-huh. He didn't live in Northampton. He did at some point. He moved in for a while, but he was he was actually born in Hadley, as in the doctor came on the horse and <laughs> and uh, came to the house and, and and birthed him up there in North Hadley. Uh-huh. Um, but and the family home is in North Hadley, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's where you and that's Bill where we live. Now. Yes, and raised three three reared. raised three children three yep. children. Bill and I met in, um, uh, I'm not, I am from outside Boston, a uh, small town of Carlisle. I don't, I don't think it's as small as it was at the time, but I always felt like uh, Hadley, what, ha- when I came to Hadley, I felt Hadley is like Carlisle was when I was growing up. Yes. Um, so. Uh, you and Bill were both in law school? We met in law school. Yes, I'd been out here because I was at Smith college at the same time he was at Amherst College and that we didn't meet though until we were at we were both at Boston College Law School and that's where we met and we had a lot of in common and you know we drove out here a couple of times and you know it it just uh it worked it worked (laughs) worked. worked worked. for a lot of years now yes (laughs) yeah it worked a lot of years and um Bill was actually a class ahead of me and he came out and clerked for uh, a federal judge in Springfield and then I was graduating the next year. It's like, hmm, where should I be looking for a job? Uh, and um, which hinged on which are Bill and I a couple? Yeah, should I be going to D.C.? Should I be staying in Boston? Yeah. But so that's kind of when we made our plans. Like, let's let's do this. And we came out. And his dad, as you mentioned, had a, a practice already in Northampton. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came and joined his dad first. <laughs> uh, well, he was finishing up the clerkship, but right oh. right as he was finishing that up and before he came, we, we got married right then. So we mm-hmm. got married, went on the honeymoon, and came back and went to work together. <laughs> went to work. So that yes. was 41 years ago. Wow. So, so tell us about your children. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, moved, we moved to Hadley then and uh, had uh, our first child. We have three children. We had uh, Dan and Allison a couple of years apart in the 80s, and 10 years later, we have Michael. So, um, because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and it was... It a was, little tease there. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and, and uh, yeah, because it was fun, because, mm. because we enjoy children. Mm. And um, mm. we had started our kids uh, in private in Northampton, because at the time, Hadley didn't have a full-day kindergarten even. And so yes. we were, had the daycare, we went right on into kindergarten, and um, we always felt that um, the, the kids that were from Northampton were more invested in, in what was going on there than our kids were sort of 
from the next town. Sure. So we wanted our kids to have that sense of belonging too, that they were in, they lived in the community where they went to school and where, face it, they, I mean, their relatives had been here. They had relatives who taught in the Hadley schools. Wow. Um, they had been here uh, a long time. And what is the point of living here if we're not going to go ahead and, and buy the whole heritage and background and history and, and just, you know, just give it up. This is where this is where the family's from, and we're That's just going to go for it. Yeah. So they went through the Hadley Public Schools here, and have all three you would label been success stories. I think they're uh, yeah. We're really proud of all of them. Um, uh, we you know went through this. It, it's it's a yeah. It's, it's, uh, you have grandchildren. We do. We have two. Two. Yeah. We have two. A boy we and a girl. Uh, we have two girls, two girls. Uh, from two different families. Okay. So our older, our oldest son Dan, um, he graduated Hopkins, went to Amherst, and then he met his wife. Uh, they were both getting uh, PhDs and in, um, in medical research at Harvard, mm -hmm. um, and they met there and they married. I think it was the same year they got their PhDs and got married. Wow. Um, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Eleanor, they had Eleanor, who is now turning five this summer, and she's a, she's a riot. She comes out, she calls us Grammy and Grampy, and she loves to come for a weekend if they have to go away. She, they, she thinks that's great. We, uh, <laughs> we adore her. Um, she's got big curly hair like her uh, Auntie Allie did, so um, sometimes Dan says, I think I'm raising my sister. <laughs> she's so much like her aunt, it's adorable. So yes, and she's just learned, uh, just by watching TV, she's learned a little bit of Irish step dancing, so she's putting on shows uh, for them, and, and she's just uh, always, always fun. Does she want you to step dance with her, Linda? Actually, she insisted that her dad send a text message to me, next time that we're out, this is going to be our routine. So she had it through <laughs> breakfast and whatever, and middle of the afternoon was dance time, right after her nap. I love it. <laughs> so, so that's fun. Yep. And then our daughter, Allison, uh, she also graduated at Hopkins Academy and went to Wellesley and then uh, uh, worked for a while in D.C. where she met her husband, and then she uh, got her Ph.D. from Cornell in sociology with a specialty in criminology huh? and um, now teaches at University of Buffalo and uh, they had their first daughter Claire who mm -hmm. just had her first birthday yesterday and Grammy and Grampy are going to go out for a birthday party this weekend and Lovely. all the way out to Buffalo. Fortunately we don't have snow this weekend so we'll be able to get there. Yeah. So. And where's your afterthought? All right. <laughs> My, all right. If I may the, be we, so flip. we saved the best for last, you mean? <laughs> I can certainly hope. <laughs> uh, Michael, Michael was a uh, Michael was super fun to have when we had. I, I call them as you're having your working with your angsty uh, teenagers oh. to have this little uh, uh, comic relief running around the house. Uh, he was he was really fun. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, graduated here. He also went to Amherst College, and since he graduated in 2014, he um, has been working with a uh, with Form Labs, which is a 3D printing company. Uh -huh. So that is his day job, and he's enjoying that. And he also is uh, in his in his free time and weekends. He is a musician. He likes to compose, and oh. he, he's a singer songwriter. And, and uh, what, what sort of music? What genre? Uh, what's he called? In indie ska. Uh, there's all kinds of yeah. genres that he introduces and, and yes. tells us about. But yeah, yeah. so we, we enjoy that. So they're in three very different fields. Nobody went to law school. That strikes me. Yeah, <laughs> they they watched you and Bill probably and said not for us. That's the end of Dwyer and Sanderson. <laughs> but um, I'm going to circle glad. a little back. Thank you for sharing all that. Though. That's. <laughs> It's part of my favorite thing about interviewing people. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's um, fun to talk about them. You got kind of into this. You were a lawyer with Bill mm -hmm. uh, and doing the firm for a mm -hmm. while, and then you got the public or you got on the finance committee here in Hadley. Mm -hmm. Take us through to how you got to be treasurer. Uh, um, a lot of. Um even though we were working together in the same law firm, it was just the two of us. Sometimes we'd have someone else in. Obviously, we started with his dad, but um, we always found it worked pretty smoothly when it was just the two of us because we had really no one else to account for, and it was nice, very nice to be able to just say, 
there's a soccer game this afternoon. I'm going to go over. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And it's just, we're just accountable to ourselves. I, I really, I, I liked that part of it. Um, if we wanted to, um, I mean, if we wanted to work crazy hours, we could have stayed in Boston. <laughs> but we're out here, as most people are. They've chosen to be out here for the lifestyle. They didn't ch- come, choose to be out here for the you know the high <laughs> the hiring the high life. <laughs> and the busy uh, you know the busy professional yeah. world. Yes. Um, so um, so yes, I always enjoyed finance committee. Now my part of the the job, and this is why I think we work together really well. He did real estate, and he did cor- just corporate. He does a lot of. Uh, it does areas that I would not do. I was on the tax, I would do tax preparation. Oh. Uh, we would do estates together and I would do the probate accountings, which is, mm-hmm. you know, what what money are you starting with? What money came in? How did it get spent? What do you have left over? So it was about figures. It was oh, all about the like, figures. It was yeah. like, g- give me that. I, I know I've got the answer. I, I, I can get the I answer. Can get <laughs> yes. Yes. So much of law, and it just... It, it just it still it still makes me laugh sometimes when I hear uh, people in, in the town say, "Well, that's not legal," or the, or the law says, and I go, "Yeah, so says half the attorneys, and then the, the other, other half, half the attorneys are going to argue with the we, otherwise there wouldn't be that's why we have we, courts that's why we have courts right? yes so it's always subject to interpretation yeah. and yes. I li- I like that numbers that I like that numbers added up and I like doing mm. taxes you know getting everything in for the income and deductions and your bottom line your tax is they're not that's very just, nuanced. Are they um, figures? No, I mean, you, I'm, I'm not saying you can't do different things with them. But. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> but but not me. Uh, no, no, they're pretty. They're pretty much. Yes, I, I'm very pragmatic in my approach to what I what I like to mm-hmm. do. And, mm-hmm. and it's funny because Bill's more like takes the larger theoretical things more, and so it worked together. But. Um, I enjoyed coming back on finance committee a lot and getting involved again and seeing how things had changed. Um, and then um, we had been uh, our youngest graduated college, so our day to day life was different. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could work as long as we wanted, then there was no reason to go home anymore. Uh-huh. But so it was just kind of getting, mm, oh, what are we going to do next? And okay. uh, yes. well, no, Bill's saying, I'm, 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 this, this is good. I like this. And then, um, then when uh, the previous treasurer, Connie Michkowski, had been treasurer for a long time, mm-hmm. and she decided to leave with one year left on her term. Okay. So they were three-year yep. they were three-year elected terms at that what time. What year are we? Mm, we're back in two thousand fourteen. Okay, back in fourteen. Mm, back Connie in, says I'm done. Uh, she year says left. yes. This okay. this will be this will be it. Um, with a year left, actually, she left. In, into into fifteen, and these were elected at that point. It was it was elected, so okay. she left one year on her elected term. So I said, "Honey, how about uh, how about I do something? Let me let me try this. It's only a year, and then maybe the town will want to go in another direction. I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll want to go appointed, and maybe they'll find you know. I don't I don't know what they're going to do, but mm-hmm. how about because it was very short notice too. Um, um, I grabbed the, 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 the I, I ran. I just went. I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I thought, actually, I might do it part-time, but it, was not, it, didn't, it didn't work out that way. Turned out. So I wasn't sure. I, I, I guess I didn't really know what I was getting into, although uh, uh, not that I'm, I'm not at all disappointed. I just really didn't know what I was getting into. So, um, so yeah, so, so I won, and, and that was going to be the next year of my life. And mm-hmm. it was, I, I really... I really enjoyed it. I just did. I liked I liked the camaraderie with other people that we're working with in, in town, and um, I liked being a part of something larger like this, and that we all kind of are working towards common goals as a large group, as opposed to, uh, and not that I didn't enjoy this too, but the difference is when you're working for a client and you're trying to help them achieve their goals. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what you're doing one by one. You're helping them achieve their goals. And, and this was a completely different level of, of yeah. goal. What are, where are we going? What's now the town? you've got the whole town yeah. to work for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. we're never as a group going to all have the same goals, but mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. we, we can get the majority. We obviously do get the majority there. So... You can talk to other people. You can come to consensus. I assume. You can participate. Yes. There's. You, you can be heard. You can't always win, but you can always be heard. What a lovely thing. Yeah. 
doesn't feel like where we are these days very often. I hope we stay that way in Hadley. Amen, sister. Yeah. 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 I, I, I like that part of it a lot. I'm going to wrap this up with a question about what you don't do. But again, given all that she's just covered here, anything you want to expand on or ever ask? It's good to find. <laughs> so talk about what the treasurer does not do. Hmm. Well, probably the most phone calls that I get that are not what I do, but I completely understand as I sign the checks, I print the checks, we print the checks and we sign the checks. Okay. But so when has, someone has a question about their <laughs> check, I don't necessarily know. I might have seen the invoice. I, I, I review the invoices enough um, to know that you're going to get a check this week for $50, but I don't necessarily know what you did for it. Yes. Um, or why you All you you're know being is what paid. the invoice yeah, says. Yeah, why, why you wonder why it's coming so late or why you know why it's not the 75 you asked for I don't know things like that right. so when people submit uh, the departments or people or vendors submit their invoices to town uh, to the town it's to the accountant so the accountant goes through and she assembles them and puts them all together in what uh, Jane calls those big fat files of invoices <laughs> and that's what we call a warrant that's one of our warrants we also go to town meeting and have warrants, and, uh, yeah, and the police have warrants. But this is what's called the vendor warrant, which oh. is a, which is the list of bills that we pay. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's all in the VADAR, our, our, our accounting system, and she says, approved. And I go, okay. And I go in and I find them, and I have her, in, I have her invoices. Uh, we have a shared website where I just go check. Um, part of this is part, the, part of the check and balance system, so that nowhere along the line... Uh, did someone say that check to Sharon? I'll just put my name there and set. So there's all of this. Is the ultimate check really match the the, the invoice? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have we have so many checks and balances, and it's all. It, I mean, it doesn't mean things can't happen, but um, we are we have them in Hadley. They're required by the state. Um, we really we really take it to heart. Mm -hmm. So I uh, so far we we. Been okay in that area. We so, and I hope that that can continue. So yes. So what I don't do is uh, authorize the bills in that way. Okay. So, but I understand why I get the phone call or I get sure. the email and I go Shh, send it over to the accountant. I introduce you by the email. I'm copying you both. Take it away. Yep. You're the name on the check. So I am the name on the check. So you're the person we call. <laughs> phone I, number's right there. <laughs> I would do it. Yes. I understand. Yes. Are there other things you can think of, Jane? Uh, I think this was one of the things you wondered about, what she doesn't do. Have we covered that? Well, and you don't do the collector's job. I don't I don't collect the bills, and that's another thing, yes. Uh, many towns have a shared collector treasurer position. Huh? So if they want to, um, uh, they've received a check from the treasurer, the treasurer does this or that, and then they get their excise bill, and they, what, what, why is my water bill so high? Yes. They'll call me on, on, on that thinking that we're the same person, perhaps, mm -hmm. or the town they moved from, it was just one office. Right. So, no, I don't do anything with collections. That would be Susan Glowatsky and Kim Pfeiffer downstairs, and they're very happy. If I get a voicemail, I just send it, send and it forward on. it. They're mm -hmm. happy to pick it up and, mm -hmm. and go from there. I don't think, um, uh, the one area where I do direct collecting is tax titles, so that, that is, and that's is the tax, tax title collections. Titles. Yeah, if they haven't been able to collect it, by the, a certain time, uh, the, the, the collectors will send that upstairs. So that's the one area of real estate collection that I do. So you're so, the next. Um, I'm, the, I'm the yes. We're next, the, we're step the next one. Yes. For someone they, who doesn't pay taxes. Correct. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. And then, how'd you get to be the police person on that? Uh, it's statutory. It is. It really it is. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is. Uh, we don't. We didn't reinvent things in Hadley. Mm. We do. The, we do what we, they say. <laughs> we, <laughs> great thing. we. Every city and town in the state has certain uh, parameters that they're operating within. Okay. They they have some flexibility. They can decide they want a combined position. They can decide they want separate positions. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple. A few years back. Um, 
Uh, we really didn't get into, uh, into what we were, wanted to say that uh, even though I started out and was elected and I ran again and was elected again, that both the collector and the treasurer are now appointed positions. Bye. That's something that a town can do and another town will do that differently. Mm -hmm. So we do appoint you? Uh, that's what we're appointed by the select board. The select board. Yeah. Okay. And um, so... Wait, we got a question there. over there? Oh. Another voice. <laughs> now speak up, Cynthia. You know I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, how does Hadley measure up with other towns about our size in terms of the size of our budget mm -hmm. and what we're able to do with it? Boy, that's, that's a really good question. <laughs> and I know that Jane has some input on that, too. Because our population is about 5,000, a little over 5,000. Maybe it hovers in and around there. But, oh my goodness, what we see in traffic during the day, and who passes through Hadley and who comes and shops here, uh, travels, um, comes, comes to events, uh, traveling between Northampton and Amherst. Oh, I wish I could remember like the how many, like tens of thousands of... 50,000 cars a day plus. A day that come through the one town. Way. 50, one way. 50,000 one way? So when you're doing some of our programs, some, some of the departments... Well, look, Council on Aging, you're set up for our Hadley citizens. Right. You're probably appropriately sized, probably, very, I, I'm guessing here, you might, similarly sized program to what you would find in another town of 5,000 people across yes. the river or in a county around. We are very comparable in that way. When it comes to police and fire and highway, we're really in a different league altogether because we're addressing the needs of people that are coming through the town and the businesses that are here to address. Now, these businesses didn't move here for Hadley citizens. Hadley citizens alone, they did hopefully move here for us. But they're also taking, they're also um, here for Northampton, Amherst, the cities around. They're here for the parents coming to the UMass graduation. They're here for the relatives coming to family weekends. Um, they're here for the sports teams and the camps that are, are here, come here all summer long. So we have other levels of, of our little community that are addressing a large, much larger mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. And that's what can be very, very confusing sometimes because people, some people in town really only see one aspect of it. The businesses kind of only see what's going on on Route 9. Um, I live five miles at north on Route 47. Mm -hmm. I can get to home and back, uh, to town hall and back. I don't go on Route 9, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm home and I need to go to the mall, I'm going up Roosevelt. I'm not traveling Rocky Hill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which also can be very, very busy. So. Um, so yes, so we do have a larger budget than towns of this same population, but we are almost not comparable to various sets of towns. This Route 9 is like having Riverdale Road or uh, West, Springfield. West Springfield. Yeah, there's other um, Memorial, Memorial Drive, Carolyn mentioned. These, these uh, the strips of commercial um, businesses in, in um Recreational and, rec and, and uh, movie theaters. Um, you said at the beginning that there are benefits to the town, yes. but there are also responsibilities, yes. I believe was your word. Yes. And yes. those fall on highway department and police department and fire department. Primarily those departments, mm -hmm. yes. But they're not for the residents solely. Right. Yes. They are not. So I might live five miles that away and not be on sewer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. By the way. <laughs> but do I have some responsibility for the fact that we attract all these businesses and it's built up on Route 9 and we want them to stay here and we need to adequately address the infrastructure that's going to support these businesses? That's, uh, the, the answer to that lies with everybody. Not, you know, with, that's what we get to decide when we go to town meetings. And when we go to public meetings and we, when we address the select board, we send them our, our letters or we appear in public comments and uh, participate at their sewer and water rate hearings. Mm -hmm. it's just, even though they're all here, it's our decision. So mm -hmm. it's, it's 
these 5,000 people, and I don't, well, they're not 5,000 voters, but this mm -hmm. is the deciding body nonetheless. So it's, it's just, it's really interesting it to see how it fits together. I, I, we are unique. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say, and then it makes other people groan, oh yeah, well, well look at these comparables. Oh, there is no comparable to Hadley. <laughs> well, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay. Yes. Answered. Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Good question. I yes. really. Uh, yes, yeah, it was. Really appreciate your answer. Anything from you, I'm Madam good. Producer? I'm good. You're good. Did you re read your whole book? <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> I had a meeting last night. <laughs> All right. You have been a delight. Oh, thank you. It's been and nice. I thank you for taking the time. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Makes me wish again I lived in Hadley. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. You're welcome. Whoever is watching this for joining us, Cynthia for coming, Jane for coming and producing, and Linda again. Good job. And thank you, John. John, my love. <laughs> thank you, John. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right.